What is happening, everybody? Welcome to Getting Ready for a Third Grade Math Like a Boss. My name is Miss McCarthy, and I'm so glad that you are here. If you are a student, what's up, students? If you're watching from your classroom, if you are watching from home, what is going on? I'm so glad that you're here. And finally, if you are that creative individual, that really, that go-getter champion, because you're watching from your vehicle right now while your parents are driving you around, that is awesome. I'm so glad that you are learning on the go. That is really cool. So um, the purpose of these videos is to get you ready for third grade math to be like a boss, to be the champ of your class. Now I'm not going to teach you everything that you need to know in these videos, but I am going to teach you the big hitter skills, okay? Like multiplication, place value, rounding, division, comparing fractions. If you know these, you are going to be a boss, okay? So keep watching. Um, Let's get going with our boss notes. So let me teach ya. Boss notes. We're gonna record some boss notes here. You should have it on your complete guide because you have already downloaded it. Um, you can. I'll show you how to access it at the end of this video. You can also click the link in the description box below. That will get you the same stuff that I'm doing here, plus way way more practice for you to become a boss. So. Boss notes. We're on multiplication, week six, part two. Last week we did groups of things. This week we are using multiplication. We're modeling it as an array. So we're going to record the same thing to begin with. Factor times the factor equals the product. Now if you have not watched multiplication part one, the week five video, go watch that one first then come back to this one, okay? Um, final, not finally, what am I talking about? For the next set of notes, we learned last week that the number of groups is our first factor, and the things in each, or tie, is our second factor, which equals the product. The product is also known as our total, okay? But today, with arrays, Arrays. I want you to go ahead and record this word. Arrays. Okay, it's something that we're going to draw. And what I want you to remember is that the first number we go down, and the second factor we go across and to the right. The right for you guys. So down to the right, down to the right. So let's take a look at our first problem. Down to the right, down to the right. right. So here we go with example one. Now last week, we learned that the first number is our groups and then things in each. So last week, we would have drawn seven circles with three in each. This time, I'm going to show you a different strategy to get the same answer, okay? So this week, we are practicing going down to the right, down to the right. So we're going to draw seven circles going down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles going down. And now we're going to make sure we have three circles going to the right. Already have one, two, three. Already have one, two, three. Already have one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Already have one, two, three. Already have one, two, three. And when I count these up, I have 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. A product or a total of 21. Okay, example 2. 8 times 1 equals. So we're going to go 8 down and 1 to the right. But first, if you remember from last week, we know when we have a factor of 1, there's a 1 as a factor, it's something special. It's called the identity property of multiplication. Identity property of multiplication. And that states, whenever you have 1 as a factor, 
the other factor is the product. So I predict, based on this property, that my answer is going to be 8. But let me show you how to do this with an array. So we're going to go 8 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And 1 to the right. Well, I already have 1, so how many do I have in all? A 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 total. Boom. Identity property of multiplication all the way. Now, I want you to practice number three, number four, and number five on your own. And then pause the tape right here. Pause. No, don't pause yet. <laughs> um, you're going to pause the tape in just a second. Do those. Work them out. Come on back. Check your work. See if you're a boss right now. Multiplication with arrays. Now go ahead and pause for real. Pause. We're at the practice it section. You should have done number three, number four, and number five on your own. And right now you're here. To check your work and see if you're right or to fix any problems that you have. But before we begin, I just want to point out that I know that we're taking time to draw these out and eventually I do want you to be fluent or be able to figure out what the product is or the total without even having to draw anything. But for the purpose of this video, I want you to have a clear understanding of what is happening with multiplication. That multiplication is groups of things, or multiplication is an array, or repeated addition, and so forth. Um, I want you to understand it. We'll get the practice later. Not in this course, but later I'll have something out there for you. Um, and eventually I'll put in a video in the description box below that's a song to help you get a little bit more fluent. So with that said, let's get to number three. Let's see how you did. <clears throat> okay, so two times four. The first factor, does that mean that I go down or to the right? Down. You're right. I go two down and I'm going to go four to the right. Down to the right. So two goes down and then I say already have one, two, three, four. And how many do I draw down there? Okay. How many circles do I have in all? Four plus four, which would be eight. Excellent. I hope that's what you got. All right, example four. Five times five equals what? Well, my first factor is how many circles I'm going to draw going down. And my second factor of five is how many I draw going to the right. Excellent. So five going down. One, two, three, four, five. Already have one, two, three, four, five. Five. Now I'm drawing this one. Already have one, two, three, four, five. Trying to be as lined up as I can. Already have one, two, three, four, five. Already have one, two, three, four, five. Already have one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Now, if you do not know how to count by fives, that's okay. You could just count them all up. But if you do know how to count by fives, make it faster for yourself. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. All right, party people, we are on number five. You may have gotten a little bit tripped up here. That's okay. We got zero times eight. Do you remember from the last video that there's something special about the zero as a factor? It's called the zero property of multiplication. We wrote that down last week. Zero property states that when you have a factor of zero, the product is always going to be zero. So I can put that there, but let me show you how to draw it out. Zero is how many I'm going down, and eight is how many I'm going over. So how many am I going down? Nothing. So I can't even go over eight because I have nothing going down. So let's just put a big X aroni right there because there's nothing that I could possibly draw. The answer is just zero because of the zero property of multiplication. Today's B message is to be determined like a boss. Someone who is determined stays focused and doesn't give up. So what do you need to do? You need to set a goal for yourself. And then you need to plan action steps for that goal and go after it. You might slow down. You might even fall down. But you have to get up and you have to keep going. 
Stick to the plan that you've created. Adjust it if you need to, but whatever your goal is, be determined to go after it. And of course, let me know what kind of goals you're going after in the comment section below. Get ready. Get ready.